So I hope everybody hears me well. This is a heart, hardly welcome to all of you who are in this meeting today, an information meeting about the solution-oriented research for development program. My name is Claudia Zingoli. I'm based at the Swiss National Science Foundation. I'm the scientific coordinator of this program and I will guide you through this information meeting today. We will have uh, this little agenda. There will be a presentation about the key characteristics of the program and its funding opportunities. Then we have a, a question and answer session. And while I'm presenting, uh, we assume that you might have uh, additional questions that come up. So we, you are invited to put them in the chat. Uh, Marie-Jeanne and David um, will um, bundle them into different categories and we will then also answer them in bundles. We would like to end the meeting uh, in at uh, 3.30 and we will have uh, another information meeting of the same structure in about two weeks. And depending on your needs, uh, we might organize also an additional meeting in May. But this depends uh, about, about your questions and whether we feel need about that. Okay, so this is to start with key characteristics of the SOR4D program. You might all have read the call, but I still would like to repeat its main goal. The SOR4D program is uh, about to uh, wants to produce better knowledge solutions and innovations by needs-based transdisciplinary research that opens up new ways for advancing sustainable development and reducing poverty in the least developed low and lower middle income countries. With that, the r d pro the sor d program strives to contribute to the implementation of the 2030 agenda by fostering partnerships, co-creation, of knowledge and innovation. The SOR4D program has three objectives. The first one is um, that researchers and development actors shall jointly generate in their respective geographical context needs-based solution-oriented knowledge that contributes to sustainable development and poverty reduction. This includes validation in those contexts where the research is conducted. As a second objective is about um, skills. Research and, and development actors shall enhance their competencies in conducting this kind of solution-oriented transdisciplinary research in partnership. This means that systemic and complex development uh, challenges are addressed. And for that, uh, it is essential that findings are shared between academics and practitioners. A third objective um, is, is targeting the testing and dissemination of research results with potential for innovation. With that, uh, the focus is on extending the partnerships and networks and trying to scale up some of the solutions that you might come up with. The SOR4D program is a partnership program sponsored by the Swiss Agency for Development Cooperation and the Swiss National Science Foundation. They have signed a new partnership for the, this decade um, where, that, where they announced that they would like to coordinate their funding efforts for cross-border research partnerships with developing countries and especially for also disseminating and making use of research results in the benefit for, for the benefit of society. This partnership is a continuation of a long-term partnership between these two institutions. They have been cooperating in different ways for many, many years and decades. The, the, the two last uh, uh, expressions uh, is, is the R4D program that ran for 10 years and is still running until the end of this year. And this new solution-oriented research for development program, which has a duration of five years and hopefully a, a bit longer. <laughs> the focus of the funding that is provided in the uh, solution-oriented research for development program 
is on international collaborations between researchers and development actors from least developed low and lower middle income countries and Switzerland. You see below uh, a policy brief that emerged from the R4D program where exactly this, um, this use and this the, the transdisciplinary nature of these kind of research collaborations is addressed and how this can contribute to sustainable pathways of impact and uh, sustainable impact pathways for transformation. In the SOR4D program, only transdisciplinary projects are funded. We uh, aim with this program towards a better use of research knowledge by society and knowledge that is being produced in partnership with practice partners. There is a strong focus also on gender awareness and equal opportunities that has to be taken into account throughout the research and implementation of the research projects. In terms of focus, the SOR4D program is quite large. It is open to all disciplines from the humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, engineering, health, and life sciences. It encourages also interdisciplinary collaboration between the research domains, between humanities and engineering, for example, between social sciences and health sciences. These kind of combinations are very welcome, where, of course, this co such collaborations are appropriate. There is an explicit aim for systemic and transformative solutions that simultaneously address several of the, of the 17 sustainable development goals. Since the program is sponsored by Swiss public funding, it has it, um, your research um, proposals can find orientation in these four broad objectives of the of Switzerland's international cooperation strategy. The, our, the SOR4D program has a total budget of 19.3 million. With this, uh, we aim to fund between 14 and 28 projects. And we have a maximal number of of transdisciplinary uh, transformation accelerating grants of, of the maximum amount of projects that are being funded. That might be 28. There are two calls in, in, uh, that are being launched. One is the call that is open now, February 22. And we might open again, we have another call that might open around November 22 already uh, with submission dates uh, in. 2023. With this, uh, this is a picture from the SOR for the program trailer, which was um, produced uh, based on the footage that we collected in the numerous R4D programs. And you see here a group of researchers that have been collaborating with us in the R4D program. And uh, this is really a transition phase now between the 10 years R4D program, which had similar objectives, and this new solution-oriented research for development program. In some of you um, uh, provided comments already in the registration for this event. And one of them was that we should provide a, a couple of examples of projects that might fall into, into the funding scope of the SOR4D program. So I provide, uh, we provide three uh, project examples for you to, to find a bit of inspiration. But of course, you are more than invited to come up with other uh, innovative and also unconventional ideas and consortia compositions. So the first example I would like to show is uh, called, is the project Coco Boards. Coco Boards was a research partnership between Switzerland and the Philippines. It was very much focused on, on technical innovation 
uh, based on coconut husk they uh, developed and invented the construction material. Coco Boards was a three years project in the R4D program. And uh, in, in another open call of the R4D project, almost the same consortia applied for Pinoitanin. Uh, uh, um, another technological um, project that was very much related to cocoa boards uh, and is, uh, is also uh, implemented as partnership between Switzerland and the Philippines. Cocoa boards also uh, benefited from uh, the Transformation Accelerating Grant call that was launched in 2019. That was um, uh, an expression of interest from the R4D researchers that the R4D program should provide funding for testing results and for taking results further. So we opened up a new call and Cocoa Boards was amongst the, the first ones to implement also this such a tag um, initiative. From this group, um, the, the Nature Loop Swiss based green tech and material science startup emerged. Nature Loop has in the meantime also uh, received funding from other um, startup uh, funds, uh, other partners, and they are striving now as a startup uh, in close collaboration with their Philippine partners. A second example uh, that is, is more from the social sciences and humanities, and because of the actualities, uh, it is very, I, I chose this project is really relevant, Knowledge for Peace. This project looked into um, the production of knowledge and how memories are archived and presented. So they were looking very much into trans, 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 um, tr transitional justice processes in countries where conflict um, are very severe. And so, so they have been looking into, into possibilities for remembrance. We have another project that was in a zip that was uh, in a similar direction, a project that was implemented by social psychologists and anthropologists. Also, they looked very much into archiving, into remembrance. They also worked a lot with arts. Uh, to to also address trauma, so these this is an example. These are two examples that are more from the social sciences and humanities and the arts. A third project um, is the oil palm adaptive landscape project. You it as as it says it's. It's uh, dealing with uh, um, oil palm production and was looking for solutions for more sustainable uh, oil palm and palm oil production. You see below a consortium made up of research partners of WWF, so also implementing partners, a, a very, a, a, a quite a big consortium that has been working together for six years, almost seven years. They have produced a lot of scientific papers, but they have produced more, <laughs> more uh, videos and policy briefs and communications um, to be used in, uh, with, in, in the policy arena and with stakeholders on the ground. So that has been a truly transdisciplinary, transdisciplinary project right from the beginning. The project consortium was already composed of researchers and practitioners, and they have jointly um, created a lot uh, in terms of output, but of course also in terms of networks, in terms of policy dialogue, in terms of practice uh, development. So have a look at these uh, projects if you if you like to be inspired, but of course also if you like to see what can be done with in projects that run three years, in projects that look for more funding elsewhere, that benefit of additional funding calls. So these are the examples that I would like to uh, uh, mention to you here.
I see a lot of comments already coming in and also questions. So please continue writing your questions while I'm speaking. I'm coming now to a more technical aspect, but I think this is what you are also very much interested in hearing about what we have the our SOR for D program is structured and 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 uh, how these mixed consortia and the project funding is supposed to be implemented. So first of all, um, this is a research partnership program between Switzerland and uh, ODA recipient countries. Because of SNSF funding regulation, the Swiss research partner has a special role as responsible applicant for the full team, for the full consortium. This person that is based at the Swiss uh, Higher Education and Research Institution will submit the pre-proposal and full proposal in the name of the full consortium of applicants. The full consortium of applicants consists of a Swiss research partner and a research partner from a partner country, from an ODA recipient country, and a development actor, so a practice partner from this country. This is the minimum required composition of the consortium. We have seen that it is of high benefit that um, the research partnership is not only bilateral between Switzerland and another partner country, but if more partner countries um, are part of the consortium, because for, for, for exchange, for, for knowledge and learning, and it, this, this seems to be highly relevant. But it is not a condition. So you can add more partner countries, but you can also only have one partner country between Switzerland and the partner country. In addition to that uh, minimum consortium, you have also the possibility to include um, as project partner or subcontractor development partner from the global north or Switzerland. They are not eligible as, as co-applicants, but they can, be, they can be part if well justified as project partner. We have seen that um, these kind of projects require quite a lot in terms of coordination, especially when they are transdisciplinary right from the beginning. The coordination is an important element in, in these projects. And we have seen that a lot of our partners that we fund in the partner countries outside Switzerland have built their skills to become active in project coordination and project management. So in this case, in this program, it is possible that the project coordination is not done in Switzerland, but can be done in one of the partner countries. It is a shared responsibility. So adequate funding for these positions have to be budgeted, they are there, and please make use of this of, of these funds for, for these coordination tasks that uh, are, can be really uh, can be really instrumental for these kind of projects. There are three financial conditions that apply in the SOR4D program. A project can have a global budget between 500,000 and 1 million Swiss franc. You see here, um, the, again, these boxes between the partners. What is important here is now to note that the first condition is that 50%, at least 50% of the total budget has to be um, ha has to be um, uh, spent in the partner countries. So we, we'd like to see a good spending level in the partner countries, because this is where the focus is of, these, of this solution-oriented research for development um, 
uh, program. The, the second condition is that a minimum of 10% again of the global budget has to be spent on communication. As you know, in a transitionary setup with mixed partners, communication has to start right from the beginning. And it is also meant not only to stay within the consortium, but also to go out. So as 10, a minimum of 10% has to be dedicated to communication in terms of funding. And then the third condition is that we would like to see a very active role of the development act, so to speak, development actors who are based at practitioners organizations. Those who are in the position to make use of emerging research results, co-created knowledge, and that those that are in a position also to validate and valorize this knowledge, these findings in the, re in the respective local contexts or national contexts. So this is why there is a third financial condition that looks into the uh, spending that is allocated or the budget that is allocated to this to the development actors. Project funding. You will um, work out on pre-proposals and if your pre-proposal is successful, you will be invited to submit a full proposal and you will look in this uh, in these proposals, uh, you will draft uh, something that has a duration of three years. This transdisciplinary research project has a duration of three years. And because of this uh, limited duration, um, it is mostly addressing postdoc and senior researchers and does not um, uh, uh, is not made for um, uh, for big groups of PhD students that can be part of that project. Why is that? We want to have to start these projects really soon, that they can be uh, implemented right away, and that you don't need to find um, collaborators, but you already have the collaborators at the stage of of full proposal. Um, submission. There is a, a one-year extension that is granted in form of a transformation accelerating grant, which means additional uh, knowledge will be um, additional knowledge, but additional funds will be provided to the to the successful um, project consortium. How does this look? What does this look like in terms of sequencing? Once you have a, a successful project and you started with it, there is, there is the option for one year extension. You submit the first progress report. You submit the second progress report as a, as a transformation accelerating grant proposal. This will be evaluated uh, by the sor for d review panel. The funding decision will be either for the fourth year or it will be a phasing out decision after three years. But this is just the mechanism that I wanted to explain to you uh, what comes after a successful project, uh, full proposal and funding decisions. Okay, I'm coming now to the evaluation procedures and the SOR for the review panel. You have seen this uh, graph already in the call. Um, you are now in the stage of preparing pre-proposals. The pre-proposals that are being submitted until the 2nd of May this year will be reviewed by the review panel. Um, the review panel will evaluate these uh, pre-proposals and will invite selected pre-proposals to be um, elaborated into full proposals. 
those who are invited to submit the full proposals, they can um, apply for preparatory grants and the full proposals will then be submitted in the end of September. They will be externally peer reviewed. So we send them out for external reviews and the review panel will evaluate the full proposal based on the external reviews and their own evaluation to come up with funding recommendations. These funding recommendations, which include of approval as well as rejection, they will be um, formally approved and rejected by the National Research Council and its presiding board. These, um, this, these meetings are scheduled for January 2023, and we expect the, the projects, the successful projects, to be ready to start as of February until I think around May 2023. Evaluation criteria. Like in our earlier uh, program, the R4D program, scientific quality and relevance for development are of equal importance for the projects that are funded in the SOR4D program. And you see here a long list of eight criteria um, that were developed based on the discussions we had between SNSF and SDC and also with the review panel members under the National Research Council. They are a bit more numerous than in our normal funding schemes, but with these eight criteria, I think the, the, both the reviewers as well as the review panel members and the National Research Council are in a good position to evaluate these transdisciplinary research partnership projects. Um, in the in in these this this two stage process, the review panel and external experts they will mark your pre proposals and proposals in a in a in a uh, range um, from one to nine. So all of them will use this for each of the eight criteria that I showed before. They will be given a mark. And and um, and so the the review panel has a good basis for discussion. If proposals are rated equivalent, those proposals submitted by female applicants or proposals that show a better gender balance in the applying team will be given priority. If proposals are still rated equivalent, proposal with more responsibility in the OBDA recipient countries will be given priority. This already gives you a bit of an indication of how we want to move the post with this R for the uh, SOR for the program. A word about the review panel. It consists of eight scientific and development experts who are mandated for the full program duration. Uh, if, it, if we receive a high number of pre-proposals or if we see that pre-proposals are submitted from disciplines or from areas which cannot be covered by the eight um, experts, we will su provide support in the form of ad hoc review panel members, which we will recruit accordingly. All of them are uh, themselves elected by the National Research Council and its, its presiding board. So it's something that uh, we really take very serious. Uh, the review panel is trained for fair evaluation and conflict of interest is avoided at any stage. The composition of the review panel is such that all of them, um, well, this is a multidisciplinary panel, it's international, it includes members from um, developing countries and from, from other countries. Um, the members are independent. 
they have all experience in working with developing countries or in development contexts, and they have a big interest in transdisciplinarity. We have a, a review panel that is has a very good uh, gender balance, uh, and and um, yeah, the, as I said, the members are independent, but they, and they also are, have no interest in the calls themselves. Two. Um, Two delegates from the SNSF and SDC are part of the review panel. The SNSF delegate will act as chair and spokesman of the review panel, and the SDC delegates um, are fully participating in the evaluation. Um, the only uh, difference is that they were not elected, but they were chosen by SDC to be part of that review panel. And this is an information that you've also seen in the call document. These are the, uh, the eight uh, review panel members and the three delegates that support the, the evaluation in the SOR for the program evaluation um, uh, and project evaluation. The SOR for the program is managed by, at the Swiss National Science Foundation. The program coordinator is David Svarin, and myself, Claudia Zingeli. Someone else will replace me uh, very soon. And Marijan Chiari is our program assistant at SNSF. And um, our colleague at SDC, Ricarda Capretz, has also very good understanding of this program and can also support you in your questions, but also. Uh, throughout uh, the program implementation. There is a supervisory body composed of the two heads. One is at SDC, the head of policy and analysis, and the other one is the head of the programs division at SNSF. They act as the supervisory body of the sor for d program. I'm coming uh, to an end and just want to share this with you. We had the uh, introduction meeting last week with the review panel members. Um, and these are um, interesting, but of course also uh, very pertinent questions that might come up with regards to this new SOR for D program. What does it mean to fund uh, an explicit transdisciplinary research program? What is meant by transdisciplinarity? Is it about setup? Is it about the research process? How do we judge outcomes of transdisciplinary projects? These are questions about transdisciplinarity that cannot be easily answered and quickly answered. So I would like to share them with you, but this is certainly something that continues to be part of the dialogue that you might have with the SOR4D program. The second question concerns the solution orientation. Is it possible to come up with solutions in, the, in this project timeframe? What kinds of solutions are considered as solutions? We really opt for both questions uh, for a broad range of definitions and also for creativity. So please convince us about your consortia about your contributions and about your theories of change and be very explicit about that because that will help a lot in making the SOR4D program together with you and with the SDC and SNSF. So with this I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm taking a breath now <laughs> and we'll ask David to take over. Thank you very much.